Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem bitwise equation from code shift start at 78. The problem is fairly simple and the yeah, description is also small. So the problem states that given an integer n, find four distinct integer a, b, c and uh, d a such that a and b or c exhort with d is equal to n. Also one important thing over here is that the value of a, b, c and d can go up to 10 to power 18. Whereas the value of n is limited to 10, uh, limited to 2 power 32. Now 2 to the power 32 is approximately 10 to power 9 to 10 to power 10, some, somewhere in the range of 10 to power 9 to 10 to power 10. So we do have a lot of extra values that we can use. Now you might think that's not uh, important, but yeah, definitely it's a lot important in this question. Also they're saying that if the answer does not exist, print minus one. This statement is a bit idiomatic because uh, the answer would always exist. I'll just prove that in a minute. Uh, cool, so yeah, that's what they've given us. Let's get started. Uh, this is a fairly easy question just to require some basic insights regarding uh, bit set and stuff. So what they're saying is that a xor b, sorry a and b, not xor b, but a and b or c xor with d should give us n, right? Now the first thing is that I'll consider this equation to be y. I can, uh, or let's say this is x, I can consider this to be y, but y is equal to d, cool, whatever, cool. So x x or y should be in now if my x is in so what x or with n would uh, would actually give me uh, n itself so n x with 0 would give me n cool so that is something i can do uh, but there's a problem now y is equal to d over here and we know that they are asking us for, for positive values not uh, d should be greater than 0 but over here we are assigning uh, 0 to d so what can we do? Now we know that if some bit is set in both x and y, that bit would actually be negated in our answer, right? So let's say there's a big bigger number, let's say one shifted maybe 33 times, cool. If this bit is set in both x and in y, so that would be negated in our answer. So I'll say that, okay, my x is equal to one shifted to the power 30, uh, one shifted 32 times plus n. Cool. And my y is also 1 shifted to power 32 times. I hope that makes sense. Now, I already said my x is this, but how do I come up with my x? So x is actually equal to a and b odd with c, right? Now let's say I say that my c is equal to maybe n itself, right? So what should be my a and b? So my a and b should give me, uh, give me this particular value. This was also part of the equation, right? So I need this particular value. So I'll say that a and b is equal to one shifted 30, 33 times, right? That was 33, I guess. Yeah, it was 33. I mistakenly wrote it as 32. Okay, 33 times. It won't actually matter. You can take 33, you can take 40, but just take values above 32 or values above 31 because uh, till 2 to the power 31, you could have bits set in for the answer itself. So don't risk that. Start taking values uh, above 31 itself. Cool. So I'll have this. Okay. Yeah. A and B is equal to one shifted 33 times. However, I want distinct values, right? So I cannot have that A is equal to uh, like 2 to the power 33 and B is also 2 to the power 33. So what I'll say is that I know that if two different bits are set in uh, and operator, it actually becomes a zero. So I'll say that A is anything like uh, one shifted. Or, uh, let, let's just write in terms of two itself so that it's easier to write also 2 to the power 34 plus 2 to the power 33 and I'll say that b is equal to 2 to the power 35 plus 2 to the power 33. When I'll add this up, see, this would get cancelled. So my answer would be 2 to the power 33 itself. Also our answer right now is a and b that would give us 2 to the power 33. Right. Odd with c that is n. Right. X odd with 2 to the power 33. Cool enough. So our answer seems to be valid. However, there's one problem now. So the problem is that over here they have said that uh, the value of n can actually be zero. Now when the value of n becomes zero, what would happen is that our c over here is n, right? So our c also would become zero. That's also not valid. So what can I do over here? Let me set another bit. Let me set it to be 2 to the power 36 maybe, right? Or any value like you want. You can go up to, I guess, uh, we have given 10 to the power 18, right? So you can go up to 64 bits. So let's say you say that this uh, that c is also equal to 2 to the power 36 or 9 or n sorry. 
and then you'll say that you're going to exhort it with d but now this uh, when you'll exhort it with d this effect will actually come up in the answer final answer so let's say i'll also exhort uh, or d with or i'll say that the d's value was initially set as 2 to the power 33 right so now this is 2 to the power 33 plus 2 to the power 36 now when it will get exhort with the x right the x would contain this term when it will get exhort with it 32 36 and 36 would get cancelled out and that's the final solution so that's all we need for this uh, problem you can actually do it in a single line the only reason of writing it this way is it's more readable and stuff but you can actually do it in a single line so what i'm doing over here is that firstly i'm saying that my i is uh, 2 to the power 38 plus 2 to the power 34 right and my b is 2 to the power 38 plus 2 to the power 33 now when i'll add these two things up these two terms would get cancel out the answer of a and b would be 2 to the power 38 then i'm saying my three, uh, c is 2 to the power 35 plus n right so when i'll uh, like do the or of a and b or c right so what i'll be getting is 2 to the power 35 plus n plus 2 to the power 38 right so this is what this is what i'll be getting Over here, I'm saying my d is two to the power thirty-eight plus two to the power thirty-five, right? Now, when I'll be uh, like exhorting this with x itself, then these two terms would get cancelled out, right? The bits which are set in both would actually eventually get cancelled out, and I'll be I'll will be left with the n itself. So, yeah, the uh, answer would be valid. So I'll just have to print now a, b, c, and d. So that's it for this question. This was technically a pretty easy question. I hope you were able to read in the context itself. Cool guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Let me know if you have any doubts. More than happy to help you out.